All right, so it's been a while uh, since I last uh, updated you regarding this. So the thing that I'm actually talking about is actually the um, server that I was gonna go right ahead and build. Now, I went right ahead and basically did the whole shebang. It's already done. Um, but in this video, I'm just gonna show you exactly what I did. I did try to uh, <laughs> to live stream the, the server build, but I messed up and unfortunately, um, yeah, the, the stream technically didn't go as planned. I was just talking to myself <laughs> without actually, um, you know, the actual feedback going uh, to YouTube. But uh, nonetheless, let me go ahead and show you exactly what I did. Then I'm going to show you exactly how I configured everything. So let's get started. Okay, so I just want to go right ahead and show you. So that's the server right there. Um, had a, what is it, um, an old AM what is it, three uh, processor, I think it was the FM processor or CPU. Uh, so yeah, it's like, it's running, that's what's running it right now. Um, currently right now, these drives are empty, so they have no hard drives right now. Um, future plans to make maybe a RAID array. But uh, yeah, so like I was saying on my last video, the Raspberry Pi that I was using this, uh, or that I was using it for the NAS, um, it just didn't really quite work. So that's why I, uh, I built this one. So how I'm running everything, so I have, this is probably a 16 or, I think it's a 16 terabyte hard drive. So all I got it is just basically of course powered and then I have it connected over here to the back via just, you know, regular USB 3.0. I'm gonna go ahead and just basically give you a very simple uh, run through of what exactly I did. So let me go right ahead and show you exactly what I did. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly, um, somewhat step-by-step -step on exactly what I did. So the operating system that I used is OpenSUSE uh, Tumbleweed. So here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just basically do uh, just the default on everything or on the majority of, of things. So here, we're just gonna do next. So, uh, for the online repositories, I'm just going to go right ahead and click on yes. Uh, defaults would be fine. Hit next. All right, so now we have the system roles. So you have a couple of options uh, on some of the things that you could go right ahead and do. So you do have desktop with KDE, uh, Plasma, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, the option that I used for my server was actually the server option. Uh, at that point, it's just going to be just pure text-based. Uh, but for this, uh, I guess, little tutorial, I'm going to go right ahead and do desktop with KDE Plasma. And we're going to go right ahead and do next. So here, uh, we're just going to go right ahead and set up the partitions. I ain't going to be doing, um, you know, editing the partitions or anything like that. I'm just going to leave it at defaults. Here, you could go right ahead and, of course, uh, select the time zone you're in. Um, for this, I'm just going to hit next. Okay, so we're going to do a uh, local user. So here you can create a local user. It just depends what you want to name it. Uh, for this, I'm just going to do, let's just do, I always, I always do a ch uh, test account. Let's do, <laughs> let's do Chonies. Do Chonies and we'll create a password. Uh, nothing too extravagant. There we go. Uh, at this point, uh, use this password for system administrator. That's fine. Automatic login? Not so much. No, I don't want you to log in automatically. Uh, it's up to you if you want to leave that, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. Let's hit on next. Okay, so here we have some more options that we could go ahead and select. We can actually start tweaking. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into software and I'm gonna select, let's see, where are we? So I'm gonna select the, the file server. So of course, because we wanna create that um, that NAS um, you know, server, let's go ahead and select that. So of course, um, you know, file server. So this includes FTP, SMP, and, or I'm sorry, SMB and NFS protocol. So that will work. Let's go ahead and click on okay. You can go ahead and go through the list. I mean, just so you can scope it out and see what see what it has and then here so okay graphical mode uh, security so of course this is enabled this is a service will be disabled um unless you're going to be accessing this server via ssh 
uh, I would say enable it. So I'll just enable it here. If you're not and you, you just want to just log into it via, you know, a GUI, you could go ahead and do that as well. Uh, see, SSH port will be blocked. So let's go ahead and open that as well. So now SSH service will be enabled and SSH port will be open. Cool. There we go. Um, you could do network configuration. So right now I'm just going to leave it at DHCP. So we'll just leave that there. All right, so at this point, I think I'm good to go. So let's go ahead and click on install. Configuration, okay, hit install. All right, so this is gonna take a while, so yeah. All righty, so now that we have um, the system actually installed and everything, we're gonna go ahead and start, in, you know, uh, not installing, but configuring uh, the share and the SMB users and all that other good stuff. So, um, Right now, by default, it's going to want to go ahead and log in as the user that you created. But we don't want to log in like that. We want to log in as root. So we're going to go to other. Here, we're just going to type in root. And uh, because we selected that, you know, of course, the same password would be used um, for uh, the admin account, so which would be root. So we're just going to go ahead and use the exact same one that we created for the user. Hit enter. So first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and create um, the actual share or not really the share, but more the folder. So let's just go here. We'll just go to home and here we'll just go to devices. And usually where I where I put everything is actually on this uh, on the root directory. And I just go to MNT and then right here, I'll just create. Oh, I can't create a folder here. What, what is going on? All right, well, that's fine. So the other way that, that I could do this is I'll just open up a console. So we'll just open that up. Oh, hey, what's going on? What's going on over here? Okay, here we go. Okay, so we have the console open. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So we're gonna go into that directory. So we're gonna go, here we go, and MMT, press enter. Here, uh, we don't see anything, right? Okay, perfect. So now we're gonna do make directory, M-K-D-I-R, and we're just gonna name it, let's just name it share. So we'll just say share, hit enter. Now if we see over here, there's our share. So it's it's created. Okay, so next thing we need to do is we need to go right ahead and set up uh, permissions. So let's go right ahead and just set them up for, let's just say for the regular user, you know? We'll just do that. So we'll go to properties, go to permission. And here on other right now can only view content. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. And I'm going to do uh, can view uh, modify content. Uh, for this, I'm not really going to be doing any groups. It's just a very simple setup, like I said. So there we go. So, OK, cool. So that's already set there. We'll hit OK. Next thing, let's go right ahead. We're gonna we're gonna open up this program called Yast. So let's go ahead and you know, start. Type in Yast. There it is. Now here we're gonna go to System, and we're gonna find the the Samba server option. Go ahead and click on that. Okay, cool. So. Uh, for you, most likely, it's probably going to take you somewhere else. I actually went through and actually kind of did a walkthrough on it just so I, I can show you exactly what to do. Uh, but most likely, when you when you open Yes, it's going to say something about a work group. Uh, usually, I just leave that um, set, set up by default. Next thing that you'll see, it's going to be this startup menu. So right now, uh, you should be currently seeing currently uh, what is it? the current status is inactive. After writing configuration, what do you want to do? Do you want to just keep uh, current stat? Not really. We want to go ahead and start. And then after reboot, uh, we're going to change that to start on boot. So if you do reboot the workstation, Samba will actually, you know, start the, what is it? The service will actually start with it. And of course, we're going to do open port and firewall. There we go. Now we're going to set up the share. So we go into share. We're going to click on add and we're going to create a share name. So for this, just keep it, I'll just keep it simple. Just share 
and then we'll do description share drive this is a directory you can actually type in the path here but if you uh want to you know use a browse uh option you can try and do so so we'll just browse we'll go to root uh oh no no it's the, yeah the, it's computer then it's the root directory mnt share choose and there we go so now we have it selected um read only i'm i'm not really gonna select this um right now is so i'll just do the inherit acls click ok oh and you know what actually i completely forgot but that's fine so we have the directory here already enabled i forgot that we need to create the groups uh or not i'm sorry not the groups but we need to create the the samba user so if we bring up the console again and we're gonna do let's see what's uh what's the command it's smpasswd dash a and then right here we're just gonna type in the username so it's just gonna be choni's the one that we created hit enter oh that's sm oh da -da. let's see smb password there it is smb password okay so type in of course um a password of your choosing um you can you can change it so if you don't want it to be the exact same login credentials this will just be for when you're accessing the drive okay so you can change the password there so here we're just gonna hit enter cool everything's good to go now now that we have that user there okay so now we can come over here here i'm gonna make another change so we're gonna go ahead and select the share Hit edit. And then here, let's see, ACL ready. Okay, read only no. The path, the comment. We're gonna go ahead and hit add. And we're gonna hit, let's see, we're gonna find this option, which is valid users. Hit okay. And here I'm just gonna type in my user name and hit okay. Cool. That's squared away. Got that. I just want to double check. Okay, cool. Hit OK. So it's writing everything. Sweet deal. So we should be good there. Uh, next thing, uh, let's see, is is this running a CD? Is, uh, what, is, what is the command? Uh, service SMB status. Mm. Wait, no. So, oops. What was it? It was service SMB status. There we go. Okay, typo. So we do see that it uh, it is active and running. So we're good there. Let's exit that. Um, IP address. We need to find out the IP address of this server. Now you could you could have gone right ahead and actually set up a static IP address, which technically you should do if you're gonna want this to be uh, your server. Uh, but for me, it's like I just didn't do it, but you could go ahead and do it on the setup. If not, what you could do is you could just go back here into the, uh, what is it, into YAST and actually go into network settings. And you should be able to actually set up a static IP address. Uh, let's see. Oh, what's going on? There we go. Disable. And then here... You could go right ahead and basically static uh, IP address and then just set one up here. Uh, for me, I'm not going to be doing this, but if you want to do that, you could go right ahead and do that by yourself. And then at that point, you can actually find out, you know, it's like, hey, you have your own uh, static IP address that isn't in the DHCP pool. Okay, so for me, uh, I really don't, I, like I said, for me, I didn't put a static IP address. So what I need to do is I need to find it. So... The command that I usually use is IPADDR, hit enter, and here we have the interface, and then here's our IP address. So let me go ahead and bring up my um, Windows machine and see if we can actually hit this. Okay, so we're inside of this uh, Windows PC, so let's go ahead and see if we can hit this uh, server up. So uh, let's do backslash backslash, and then the IP address. Hit enter. So there we go. So we're able to see, of course, uh, some of the other files. And here is our share. 
so we can double click on it. Okay, so at this point, uh, you should be prompted to actually enter uh, credentials. For me, like I said, I already kind of like went through all of this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. So what you would do is, uh, once you get prompted for credentials, you're just gonna go ahead and choose your username. So you just type that in, and then you're gonna use the password that you would uh, that you created for the SMB um, profile. So after that, you should be able to get in here. So for right now, I mean, there's really nothing in here. So let's see if we can go ahead and start creating files and uh, maybe documents. So if we hit new file, there it is. So I'm, I'm able to go ahead and start creating things. I'll go ahead and keep on going. And we'll just do, yeah, we'll just do this. Okay, so we created three files, right? So now if we go back to the server, this should show up, right? And that is an absolute yes. So that is technically um, kind of like a simple version of what I did. Um, I did a little bit more um, configuration on this, but I just wanted to show you kind of like a quick and simple way on how you can go ahead and do this. Um, let me know. I mean, if you want me to, you know, go a little bit more into in depth with this. Um, but, you know, for right now, uh, that is technically how, you know, a simple way how to create a, a NAS drive using OpenSUSE and technically what I created with my 16 terabyte hard drive. And to tell you the truth, I've been running this for quite a while and I'm happy. It's like, it's, it's, it's good. It, you know, I'm not having so much issues with the, as, you know, with the Raspberry Pi. It's more responsive. Speeds are a little bit, well, I'm not going to say they're, they're bad, but they've, um, greatly improved, but I already know it's like I have that bottleneck because I'm running it off of the 3.0. But for right now, hey, it's, it's working what it, what, you know, it's working and it's doing what it needs to be doing. Uh, so I'm happy. Alrighty, everybody. Well, uh, thank you very much for uh, viewing this video. I hope it wasn't, um, you know, uh, I tried to keep it not too uh, tech savvy, just, you know, kind of very simple, uh, like I said. But uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. And uh, like I said, I mean, if you want a little bit more content, uh, more content uh, regarding something like this, let me know. I'll go ahead and, you know, try to find little, little ways that I can go ahead and do uh, some more videos with this. So uh, nonetheless, uh, that is the end of this video. Like always, I really do appreciate all of you for watching uh, my content. Uh, anyways, uh, that is the end. So. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next one.